السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. جزاك الله خيرا everyone for coming. We're so honored to have you guys all come here today. And we have some special guests. Uh, I want to thank the entire MSA board for putting this all together. Also, a shout out to Ibrahim Lawaru for doing a lot of the, the backstage work and he made his event possible. So we have two guests today. There are um, the good, good friends of mine. We have Muad Yachi from Dallas. He's a big uh, social media guy. Uh, he's, he's, he's huge. He's huge in America. Um, and uh, he's really good. And also we have, we have a special, special guest. He won a world competition in Dubai. His name is Ahmed Mohammed. Uh, um, he's a great, great reciter. So I have a request from the speakers. They want us all to be lit and like hype, okay? So we're, so we're gonna do a slow clap, all right? No, Everyone follow me. No, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> restart, restart, I don't know what, one second, we're gonna restart. Oh. We're gonna restart. All right, guys, ready? One, two, three. Welcome, Muad Yaki Muhammad.
الله خالق كل شيء وهو على كل شيء وكيل له مقاليد السماوات والأرض والذين كفروا بآيات الله أولئك هم الخاسرون قل أفغير الله تأمرني أعبد أيها الجاهلون ولقد أوحي إليك وإلى الذين من قبلك لئن أشردت ليحبطن عملك لئن أشردت ليحبطن عملك ولتكونن بل الله فاعبد وكن من الشاكرين وما قدر الله حق قدره وما قدر الله حق قدره والأرض جميعا والأرض جميعا قبضته يوم القيامة والسماوات والسماوات مطويات بيمين سبحانه وتعالى سبحانه وتعالى ونفخ في الصور فصعق من في السماوات ومن في الأرض إلا إلا من شاء الله ثم نفخ فيه أخرى فإذا هم قيام وأشرقت الأرض بنور ربها ووضع الكتاب ووضع الكتاب وجيء بالنبيين والشهداء وقضي بينهم وقضي بينهم بالحق وهم لا ووفيت كل نفس ما عملت وهو أعلم بما يفعلون وسيق الذين كفروا إلى جهنم زمرا حتى وقال لهم خزنتها ألم يأتكم رسل منكم يتلون يتلون عليكم آيات ربكم وينذرونكم وينذرونكم لقاء
فبئس مثوى المتكبرين وسيق الذين اتقوا ربهم إلى الجنة زمغا حتى وقالوا الحمد لله الذي صدقنا وعده وأورثنا الأرض نتبوأ من الجنة حيث نشاء فنعم أجر العاملين وترى الحمد لله رب العالمين صدق الله العظيم اللهم لا سهلا الا ما جعلته سهلا وانت تجعل حزنا اذا شئت سهلا، اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وما فعل بما علمتنا وزلنا علما انك انت العليم الحكيم. اللهم طهر قلوبنا من النفاق واعمالنا من الرياء. يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اما بعد. So uh, can we have a little more volume on this mic? Just like a little. Sorry, thank you. Um, first of all, I'd like to say um, it's a huge, crazy honor to be here. And I'm sure, like, I'm, not, I'm never going to be on this level, mashallah. Like, the, what he just did to our hearts, like, he just beat in our hearts up with the Quran, mashallah. May Allah bless the, the organizers of this awesome event. Aos Ibrahim, the sisters, everyone involved. Was, you guys did an amazing job. I you know, we'll work on it next time. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, it was crazy. I was, I'm at work, I was at work, and, like, you know, in corporate, everyone loves small talk. Like, oh, what are you doing this weekend? And I'm just like, I'm going to Kansas. And they're like, okay, have fun. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but <laughs> oh, I'm from Dallas. Is anyone from Dallas? Yeah, there's probably a reason for that. Yeah? Okay, what's up? Hey, Okay, bismillah. So um, I just wanted to say that like, I'm really happy to be here, and uh, I love Kansas. You guys are an amazing community. I'm from Missouri. Missouri. See that? See that? I should leave, right? <laughs> okay. I love Kansas, Missouri. We're all the same thing. But um, <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. So um, I wanted to start off what I really want to call like first of all you know I'm not worthy of being here to you you know but just if I have any reminder for myself first of all and to you all it's something that I learned from my teachers growing up and I've learned from like personal experiences with the Quran and with just everything going on in life is that like um, sincerity is just like one of the biggest things that we need to have and I know you guys everyone's heard that in the man amal vignette one of the most authentic hadith ever. Everyone knows that hadith. And everyone's had this talk a million times. I have good intention, good intention, good intention. But subhanAllah, like when you think about it, and when it comes to this age of, of social media, and when it comes to this age of like activism, mashallah, like we're doing amazing things, alhamdulillah, as Muslims. But there's a lot of things that we need to consider when we're doing these amazing good deeds. 
there's a lot of things that we need to think about in our own hearts when it comes to doing these amazing things that we're doing for our communities. Like for example, when you're working in the MSA, why are you doing that? This is a conversation you should have with yourself. Because it's amazing that you're doing something that's, that's, that's good for you. You're doing something that's good for your Muslim you know, student ummah. You know, it's, you're doing really amazing things. But shaitan, although he's extremely weak, in the case of shaitan, he kind of like, he's weak, but he's smart at the same time, and he knows how to get to you. So when he, when he tells you, or not when he tells you, when you decide to do something good, Shaitan's like, all right, that's fine. Go volunteer, go do that, but I'm gonna make you do that for the wrong reason. I'm gonna make you do these really great things for the wrong reason, just to impress a certain person, or to, to look good for the entire community. Is this better? Sorry. And to look good in front of the entire community, just so everyone can be like, mashallah, look at his beard, you know? <laughs> Or mashallah, he's been so active in the community. Or mashallah, she's been in every single meeting. She's never missed anything. Mashallah, mashallah. And then shaitan's going to play with your heart. And he's going to make you do these really great things. But at the end of the day, you get what you intend for. That's what the hadith says. Innam al-amalu, shout it out, bin niyat. Allah is going to judge you based on your intentions. He's going to judge that good deed that you do based on why you did it. And, the, and the, the next part of the hadith, and whoever is hijrah, whoever wanted to do this for, to please a woman so he could marry her, like that's, that's us guys, like that's, you know, how many times do you catch yourself, you're like, man, I'm, I'm only in the, the, you know, I'm only running this MSA because there's a, a lady at the MSA that I'm trying to impress or something like that, or the advisor is someone's parent that I'm trying to impress or any of that kind of stuff. And a lot of it's subconscious, that's the thing. And the hardest part about Fixing the wrong is identifying it, is finding out what, like, what, what's wrong with my heart. And the reason I'm calling this the season of the heart is because Imam Ghazali and, and uh, Ibn Qayyim al-Jawzi and there's so many mashayikh or, or scholars, mashallah, they have books and books about diseases of the heart. Hamza Yusuf, Pur Purification of the Heart, who's heard of that? It's such a big book. Oh yeah, mashallah, I'm in guy. Okay? But it's a, it, you know, the, the fact that we overlook these diseases in our hearts is such a big detrimental thing. And it's something that I've struggled with every single day of my life, and I'm sure many people struggle with it. In fact, probably all of us. Just constantly maintaining good uh, intentions and sincerity with what we do. And this leads into riyat, which is, it's, it's who, who can throw, shout out what the definition of riyat means? What? <laughs> Showing off? Pride? That's, that's kibbit. So close. But anyways, the day is basically like showing off and pretend, look, I'm going to put this bottle cap because that's the right thing to do. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave this a lot because people are going to be impressed with it. I'm only going to pray a lot because people will see me praying and they'll say, mashallah. That's like, that's basically what Riyadh is. And when it comes to like something that like me and Shaykh Ahmed and like a lot of people, when it comes to reciting Quran or leading salawat or having these little talks, a lot of times we'll just subconsciously forget the fact that we're doing it for the wrong reason sometimes. And that's why, like, when it comes to doing these good deeds, you constantly, we should constantly be asking ourselves, why am I doing this? Is, am I doing this for the right reason? And if you're not, that's okay. You can rectify and fix and renew your intentions. That's the beauty of Allah's mercy, subhanAllah. Like, it's, it's not the end of the world when you catch yourself like, oh man, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm slacking. This is, I'm doing this for the wrong reason. Should I even be doing this at all? And then Shaitan's like, yeah, you should stop doing it at all. Because it's messing with your heart. So you have, subhanAllah, like, you see how it's smart, huh? But that's why you, or we need to, like, find that balance where just, like, Okay, I'm doing these things, and I found that I'm doing it for the wrong reason. What can I do next? And social media-wise, guys, social media, like, for me personally, like, when I started off on it, like, I don't mind opening up to you guys about this. Like, some of it gets to your head. Like, the likes and the, you know, I had, like, my first, oh, I got a thousand followers. I went up to my dad. I was like, Baba, look, look at my phone. I have a thousand followers on Instagram because I make Quran videos. He was like, oh, you probably bought them followers. You fake, you know? <laughs> but no, he was like, <laughs> he actually said that, you know? But anyways. So, uh, like, it, you're like, why am I doing this? Why am I making a video online? Why am I leading the MSA? Why am I doing these good deeds? And it's so sad that, like, why are you going to let such a beautiful good deed get poisoned by shaitan? Why are you going to let shaitan ruin that, just that beautiful good deed? And, like, for me, like, the kibbutz, now we're going to jump into another disease of the heart, which is kibbutz. And that's, that's, that's uh, arrogance and, and too much pride and look at me, I'm such a big deal. Because when I started getting these comments and these emojis and these follow requests and these marriage proposals and, you know, I'm joking. <laughs> right? No, I'm joking, I'm joking. But like, when you start getting these comments, and I'm not, tell, I'm telling you guys, alhamdulillah, my case is like, it's nothing. But I, I have friends, we got group chats on WhatsApp and we're like, 
you look at these, these messages that we're getting, these Snapchats that we're seeing, like it's, it's so damaging to our heart because so many of these things get to us. Well, hey man, maybe I am a big deal. And like, the guys organizing this event, they wanted to put Qadi next to my name, and I hate that because I didn't get to go through that amazing training that Sheikh Ahmed got to go through. MashaAllah. May Allah bless him, say amen. But there's trainings and there's, there's credibility that you receive when it, becomes, when it comes to learning ilm and learning tajweed and learning all these things. There's something called the ijazah, where you complete the entire Quran with the Shaykh from front to back. There's, there's, there's ways you get to that level, mashallah. You can't just be like, yeah, man, I make videos, therefore I'm this. I, may, I, I watched a couple of you know, videos on YouTube, on uh, Salah, therefore I'm an expert. Like, there's levels and ways you, you, you educate yourself. And all of this stuff, like this whole social media thing, it ties into our hearts and it, it makes us feel so good about ourselves. Like, we're like, wow, look at me. And one of the, you know, there's a, a huge, long, terrifying hadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi he, he was talking about how um, when these certain signs come, you should forget everything else and just worry about yourself and worry about your own spirituality. And one of those things, or one of those signs was the fact that people will be impressed with their own opinions. And when the sheikh said that, I was like, yo, this is deep. That's basically Twitter.com. Everyone has an opinion about everything. All of us want to say something about this. Well, I believe this. I believe that. Well, you know? We're all so obsessed with our own opinions. And that's because of the way social media kind of shapes our mindsets and our perspectives on life. And it makes us think about like, oh, you know, I have these followers, whatever, 80, 50, 100,000, whatever. And all these people care so much about what I have to say. And then that, that goes into what? Kibir. That makes you feel like, oh man, I'm such a big deal. Because I have these followers. I'm such a big deal because I'm, I'm talking about uh, all these amazing things that people should be impressed about. And so that's by one piece of advice, going through the Qur'an, like the, the, the field of Qira'ah with these amazing mashayikh that I've had the privilege of learning from and all these people that I get to meet, mashallah. If I have one piece of advice when it comes to any activism, when it comes to any... Uh, or citations, or learning Quran, or learning ilm, or any of that stuff, or just getting involved in anything deen related, or even non deen related, where it's just a positive uh, influence or a positive effect on the community, is to always make sure that you are being sincere. And so always try to catch yourself before you're, you've gone here like crazy far. May Allah purify our hearts, say amen. And real quick, um, we're going to get into like a, what's happening? We're going to do like a little QA thing, right? Or whatever. But, um, uh, about the Qur'an, since this is a Qur'an night, building a relationship with the Qur'an is, Wallahi guys, it's one of the most beautiful things you can do for yourself. And genuinely looking into what you've recited. When Allah SWT says, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ Quran أَمْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبٍ أَقْفَالُهَا Allah SWT is asking, he's like, aren't they, why don't they, you know, why don't they do dubur? Why don't they do tadabbur on the Qur'an? Why don't they dig a little deeper into the Qur'an, into the, the words that I've said, these 604 pages, that I've said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said these words. It didn't come from a human. We, we like to you know, identify this like, oh yeah, Prophet Muhammad revealed this to us. But it came from God. The words that Ahmed just killed us with, mashallah. The words that I just read, mashallah. Like, these came from God. And Allah is saying, don't they think about the words that I'm saying? And it's so beautiful that every single word in the Quran is placed there for a perfect and specific reason. And there's so much science behind it. It's called tafsir. There's ulum al-Qur'an. And there's, you know, there's so much that goes into this Qur'an. There's so much more behind it. There's so much more behind the beautiful voice. Well, I, like the, I could listen, like, not I, but like, back in the Prophet's time, they would just hear the Qur'an and they would just start crying because of the meaning. You know? They didn't always have amazing shaykhs like Ahmed reciting. You know, like, it, sometimes they would just hear it and it would just shut their hearts down. And Allah SWT asks in that ayah, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبُّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ Don't they think about the Qur'an? أَمْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبٍ أَقْفَالُهَا Or are there locks upon their hearts? Allah Akbar. When you, have, when you can't open up your heart to the Qur'an, then why, how is it going to affect you? When you hear it just to hear it, it's like some background noise or just to you know, make your day start off on the right foot. When you're actually not thinking about it and you genuinely open up your heart to it, that's when it, that's when it punches you. In a good way, the good punch that you want. <laughs> It's kind of weird, yeah, but, you know, like, uh, what was the, uh, anyways, I forgot, <laughs> I lost my train of thought. But, oh yeah, there's an ayah in Surah Hashr. لَوْ أَنزَلْنَا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ عَلَىٰ جَبَلٍ لَرَأَيْتَهُ خَاشِعًا مُتَصَدِّعًا مِنْ خَشِعِ اللَّهِ If we have revealed this Qur'an on a, on a jabal, on a mountain, لَرَأَيْتَهُ, you would have seen it, 
crumble خاشعاً متصدعاً من خشية الله humble from the fear of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. So if this book can shatter a mountain, then what about our hearts? Well, anyways, um, I feel like I've gone on for too long. No? Yes? No? Okay. I had one more. Huh? Wrap it up? Okay. I have one more thing I want to say. Sorry, sorry. Excuse me. I talk so much. Um, basically, there's um, another like really beautiful piece of advice when it comes to the social media thing in the hearts is that when you, uh, if you want to like make sure that you're, you're not letting this social media stuff and this whole public, whatever it is, get to your heart, then try to make your private life better than your public life. And make sure that the things you do in public are much less than the things you do in private. So yeah, you volunteer, do all that amazing stuff where everyone sees you, you lead Salah, you, 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 do, you give talks and lectures, but then when you're in, on your own, when it's just you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's when you thrive, that's your prime. And like, like you know, you can, you can pray tahajjud, you can, you can read a lot of Quran and watch videos or, or study with the shaykh or anything like that. It doesn't have to be like crazy. Just try to have that mindset where my private life should be better than my public life. And it, this, you know, thinking about that reminded me of this amazing poem, which was turned into an ashid. I like to request the shaykh Ahmed to just do like two lines real quick about it. And I'll talk about it real quick and then we're done, I promise. إذا ما قال لي ربي أما استحييت تعصيني وتخفي الذنب عن خلقي وبالعصيان تأتيني فكيف أجيب يا ويحي وماذا سوف يحميني ما شاء الله تكبير Okay, <laughs> mashallah. Um, this poem is actually not as beautiful. I mean, it is beautiful and it's extremely deep, but it's it's scary. Like it's it's basically saying. I'm gonna give you a really ugly translation, but I'm bad at this. But um, it's like saying إذا ما قال لي ربي, if when maybe my Lord will tell me. So it's like a conversation between Allah and us. Aren't you a little shy that you're gonna disobey me? And you're, you're hiding your good deeds, I'm sorry, and you're hiding your bad deeds from my creation, what I've created. This is a conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, when you, and, and with the disobedience, you come to me. Do you guys understand it kind of? Because this is like when you're in your own, in the comfort of your own home, and when you're like in your room and the door's locked, or you're in your car and you know, no one can see you, or it's late at night. This is when the test comes. This is when Shaitan comes to you. He's like, hey, yo, no one's looking at you. Do your thing. Hey, yo, this, you know, go talk to that person. Go, go smoke this. Go do that. Whatever it is. And this is, Allah, this is a conversation with Allah. And Allah's telling you, he's like, hey, man, like, aren't you a little like, embarrassed that it's just me and you? Because how, how much more you know, uh, like, intimate would it be? He's like, you're in a room with one person. Like, it's kind of awkward. You don't want to do anything in front of them, right? But imagine you being in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's just you and him. No one else. And he's saying, you're hiding the sins from my people, the people, the, the, the things that I created. You're hiding al asyan an khalqi from my creation. I mean, you're, you're hiding at them. You're hiding the sins from my creation. And you come to me with the sins. So when it's just me and you, that's when you start sinning. And that was like so deep. I was, you know, I was like, man, I heard it, and then Sheikh Amos remember talking about it, and it's just, just how may Allah purify our hearts and allow our private lives to be exponentially better than our public lives and to allow the Quran to, to every time we hear it to allow it to penetrate directly into our hearts and to allow us to live our lives by the Quran like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and um, may Allah bless all of you guys and uh, Jazakallah Khair That's awesome. So Q&A Alright well you can do like a you can help <laughs> All right, now we're gonna have a Q and A. So you guys can. The floor is yours now. We have a mic coming around. So. Y'all can raise your hand. Oh yeah, raise your hand and uh, we'll give you guys a mic. It's gonna be quick. Like we're not shit. By the way, we're not shit. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Hey. And let me so Okay. He's Tunisian, there's like four of us. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, man?
I don't know. Any any like questions real quick like about like like personal, not like shitty ass stuff. Oh god. <laughs> How many Instagram followers do you have? Uh, uh, thank God I didn't understand that. Give me that. How many Instagram followers do you have? Come on. Huh? So you don't follow me? <laughs> Alright, one right here. Sit down while you want. For memorizing Quran, what we like my teachers have found them to be most productive is to create a schedule around it. Kind of to have it every single day, like something you can't miss. Just like lunch, dinner, breakfast, like I can't miss that, you know? Just like that, you can't miss your salah. Just like that, you can't miss work. You can't miss that 30 minutes or that one hour of Quran every single day. Like you treat it as if you give the Quran the qadr that it deserves, then it will give you even more qadr. You know, the Shaykh Muhammad Jibreel, he's like, this funny joke. There's a Shaykh, you know, Muhammad Jibreel. Amazing reciter, he's, he was, um, he's, he's kind of short, you know? So when he was a kid, he was even like shorter, like straight up, like this tall, he'd be like 14, you know? And he's talking about how um, when he memorized the Quran, he became a world famous reciter and things like that. Um, and he, he succeeded with the Quran. Whenever he would go up to the podium, they would literally put him a step. And he was like, that's exactly how the Quran rafani. That's exactly how the Quran lifted me. So there's, there's my answer from that. It's just to be consistent. Like, it's just like the gym, you know? I wouldn't know, but like normally people try, to, people try to get big and muscular and stuff. They have to be there every day, or they won't see the results that they want to see. A lot. You also have a professional teacher. Teach you. you have to have a very professional teacher who knows what he's doing. Most people might go to like a lockoff teacher, and I call it. <laughs> you have to have a strict teacher that's pushing you forward always, and you have to have like a group of friends to learn Quran. Because if you're doing it by yourself, you're gonna feel lonely. Eventually, you're gonna get the teacher. Awesome question. Right next to me. What about the sisters? How did you grow up to learn the Quran? How did we grow up to learn the Quran? I was lucky my parents forced me. So. <laughs> but um, it was, you know, pretty much like I went to an Islamic school. It was part of just like math. We had a Quran class. And then it wasn't until like the last year of high school where I had like eight edges that left or like eight paras. And then, uh, I was like, you know, I really want to finish before I graduate, so I just pushed really hard. Now I don't know any of the time. <laughs> just kidding, don't rush, that's what I'm trying to say. Okay, uh, now for the sisters. Assalamu alaikum. I have a young boy that I would like to take your footsteps. What advice would you give? Uh, <laughs> you don't want um, that. <laughs> <laughs> to be able to be successful in Quran and be on that schedule. Well, I like just like what we said, just finding him teachers and mentorship. Just throughout the whole process of Quran, learning Quran is to have someone that will tell you what to do, tell you to do this, and if you mess this up. I never learned until I had a, a teacher who was extremely mean. Like this guy would roast me and say, that sucked, you know, like, <laughs> not with all due respect, and he would say, that sounded really bad, or that you, you messed up that tajweed boat, stop, you know? <laughs> so it's when you have a teacher, and, and they'll, they'll drive them into, and they'll mold them with the Quran, inshallah. What do you have to add? Thank you. You don't want to have a teacher like Muad, actually 24-7. What? <laughs> you're an athlete. What's that? You don't know what happened? You guys don't know what happened? Oh, I forgot. I'm going to catch it in the soda. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. Who's next? Hi, I have a question. Um, the name of the poem you mentioned. Oh. <laughs> Is it, it, if you type in Arabic on Google, do you have an Arabic keyboard? Um, yeah. Just type either. Wait one second. It's a song. It's like an ashid now, or they turned it into one. Like all vocals for all the anti-musical instrument people. Ida ma qala li rabbi. That you should find it. It's very very popular. Chef, do you know what it's called? Huh? Uh oh. I think they'll, they'll be fine. Yeah, what's up? Next? Oh, got it. Do we got uh, any more questions? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I feel like Zakar Naik. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> so, how I can encourage my son to keep the prayer on time? So he always like pray 
but not on time. For Salah? Yes. Um, well, I, I don't know. I feel like that's a better question for Sheikh. That's okay. I, for me, Salah is just something that my parents taught me to never live without. Like, you know, like, you can do whatever you want, just don't let go of the Salah. And at the young age, you have to force them. My dad, we used to have like a curtain behind our Salah room, and my dad would like go pray. I'm like, okay. And I wouldn't even make wudu, and I'll go until so I'm like seven years old. And then I'd go there, and then he'll, go, he'll put his head between the curtain, make sure I'm praying. You know? And then his head is just popping out like that. And then I would like, pretend to pray, like, and he's like, I saw you. <laughs> and then back to so it's just constantly pushing them. They're just like the hadith of being forceful, even like seven years old and ten years old. Oh, wow. yeah. How old is your son? Like? Fifteen. I have two. I have nine years and sixteen. Which one does it free? The sixteen. He prays and he is in house, but like he doesn't do it on time. He always keep it later. Like tell them like scary stories about what happens to people that don't pray so long. <laughs> <laughs> I do. We're not sheikhs, or I'm not, so like, we just, if you have like personal questions growing up, then, no, no, seriously, like, you have to give the sheikhs the, you know, the qadr that they work for, yeah, so, so. Salaam Oh man, I'm dead. <laughs> no, I just wanted to add uh, to that, perhaps, if you don't mind, but, um, if the son is, or children are having a problem praying one time, the best thing to do is pray at the masjid. If you go to the masjid, the masjid has a certain time, so you pray with them. If you can't make it, then pray at the time the masjid would usually pray. Uh, alhamdulillah, these, I mean, that's the easiest way I found to pray on time. Allah. Miss you. Hello, assalamu alaikum. We have a request if you can do the masjid one more time, please. Yeah, the Nashida, please. We just want to record, please. Is that the <laughs> I would get one more question after. Hey, right here, because uh, we'll do this last question because we have another fun activity. Iva ma qala li rabbi amastahayta ta'asini wa tukhfi al-dhamb al wa bil-isyan ta'atini fa kayfa ujibu ya walihi wa madha sawfa yahmini usallin nafsa bil-amani min hini ila hini wa ansa ma My question was, uh, you know, uh, a lot of us have work or go by our day-to-day -day regular classes that are non-Islamic. How do you go about, you know, not necessarily a schedule, but any books, recommendations, and things like that that somebody can read or get encouraged by just to increase their knowledge when it comes to Islamic studies? Chef, you can help us? Uh, so some daily things that you can do, well let me just tell you what I do. Sometimes I feel like um, I need some inspiration. And even today I was thinking about it and I thought, well, the Quran al was revealed to the Prophet to inspire him. So I was reading some pages from the Quran al and I found verses in there. Of course as you read it you feel like you're talking, you feel like Allah is talking to you, talking to your situation. And that's the best thing I found, to read the Qur'an, and even if you get tired of reading, then listen to it. Okay, if you, do not, you don't understand it when you listen to it, then listen to the English then. Wallahi, you, I mean, if the Qur'an was there to help the Prophet وسلم, be a prophet, and be the best prophet, then why can't the Qur'an be there to help us be the best Muslims? So 
So just take a portion of the Quran and read it in the every day, one 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 page or something like that. And of course, even you have uh, local imams and teachers, and if you can't find local, then they are online. But to do something, inshallah, every day will help, especially the Quran. Can you add? Um, can you add a book? Rahiq al Makhtoum. Rahiq al Makhtoum? Yeah. Uh, I forgot the name, but that's like to explain the Quran and stuff. Do you get that? And I think it'll help. Rahiq al Makhtoum is a book recommendation. Yeah. And also the best time to like. The Sacred Nectar. The Sealed The Sealed Nectar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah that's it. And also the best time to review something or learn the Qur'an is most of the scholars, they advise to read the Qur'an before uh, or after Fajr. After Fajr, your mind is open, you're refreshed. So it's the best time for memorizing something. And also, some of them say after Mawrib, but I prefer after Fajr. After Fajr is an amazing time. Like, I memorize many things uh, at that time. Is that question for the questions? <laughs> for our extremely inexperienced subs. <laughs> Um, but yeah, like, real quick, just to add on to all of that, is if y'all ever have questions, oh, yes, I don't uh, Just one more recommendation. There's a book called Manhattan Manhattan Book. It's a book by Ibn Hajar. It's a very simple read, but it's very comprehensive. Is it English? Uh, it's in Arabic and English. So Minhaj al Muslim by Sheikh al Jazari. Abu Bakr al Jazari. Al so Alright. Um, so that's it for like Q&A stuff. Like I said, just ask like, there's people, Shaykh Ibn is an amazing resource for you guys here. MashaAllah, may Allah bless him. Say I mean, you know, the OG man. Like if y'all need anything, just hit him up. And he's, I'm sure he's down to help. And then, you know, he got even fashion tips too, you know, like he got y'all. <laughs> MashaAllah. Um, so like, don't be afraid to ask. That's the thing. A lot of times we get like really scared to, to ask, you know, people of knowledge and we're like, oh, we're intimidated by them and their length of their beard and things like that. But, you know, it's okay. You know, they're, they're, they've studied the deen and there's a lot of wisdom that comes with that. So, you know, just go to them and let it all out, inshallah, okay? Can I ask one more question? Yes. How many years did it take you to get ready for the debate competition? And were you expecting to be a winner at that time? Mm. Around 2012. Uh, I thought it was a dream, so I didn't expect to win. Mm -hmm. but, oh God, how do I explain this? I don't know, it happened actually over the years. I, I went through many competitions, I uh, competed in many competitions. It was like my last step, my last competition. So most people that come there, it's usually their first competition, or like some of them, most of them are experienced, but it's usually their first competition. So I already had experience. I went, through, I went to Kuwait for a competition, I went to Sudan. And we have many, many, many national Quran competitions held in the U.S. Well, uh, that's how I got ready for the competition. But like, for a whole year, I was reading five hours out a day, and that's how I got trained for the competition. Okay, we good? Okay, sorry for the. We have to move on to the last or second last part of this uh, program. So, um, who knows what a maqam is? Maqamat. Anyone who hasn't been to a mini camp? Okay. Basically, maqamat, like real quickly, like it's basically like the icing on the cake when you're reciting Quran. It's extremely, you know, it's not, none of this came from the Prophet. It's all just an additional thing. It's an add on to make it sound nice and sweet. So, it's there, basically, what a maqam is, is, is a type of melody with set notes of how high and low you go and, and how it sounds, and just, you, you know, you cook it up together and then. You recite, you know, some certain ayat and like a happy maqam, like hajam. Like he, mashallah, he did amazing matching the maqamat to the, the, the ayat. He read ayat about what people who entered and entering Jahannam, may Allah protect us. But he, he, he read that ayat in maqam sabah, which is extremely sad and it's depressing maqam. And then when he went to the ayat about the people who will enter paradise, may we be among them. I mean, he's like, and he read that in, in maqam ajam, which is an extremely high, you know, it's a really high and happy maqam, right? So that's what maqamat are, there are eight major ones, there's a lot of other ones, right? Yeah. Uh, there's Saba, Hijaz, uh, there's a little acronym, it's Sunni Abi Sahrika, it's Saba, Hijaz, or Saba Nahawan, Saba Nahawan, Ajam, Bayati, Sika, 
Hijaz and then Rust and then Kurd. None of y'all should know any of this. It's not a big deal. This is all just like extra stuff. Once you've mastered Tajweed, like that's the, the main thing. Is when you want to move on to something like Maqamat and, and studying like the, the, the melodious side of reciting, make sure you have Tajweed down. And make sure you know how to recite the Quran the way the Prophet ﷺ prescribed it for, or prescribed us to recite it. The rules and the ahkam. You guys know what qalqala is? Y'all heard of that? Ghunna? Give me all this. Give me, someone say qalqala. Give me a word of qalqala. Let's see. Haqqa. Good. What about ghunna? Ah. Mm, there you go. Mashallah. So these are all little rules that you have when, not little, they're major rules. And, and that's how you, it's, it's basically the, the uh, Kind of like the prescription for when you want to recite the Quran. How you recite it is much more important than the way it sounds. Cool? Yeah. Okay, so what maqamat are, for example, I'm putting Ahmed on the spot, but I want him to do uh, an ayah in maqam sika. And I'll show you how it sounds. Echo. <laughs> 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 Y'all know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Like y'all seen the YouTube, the YouTube videos after the boss and we're just like, bro, these guys are wild. But I'm pretty sure that if we were there, we'd probably do the same thing, right? But um, and I asked my chef, let me tell you this is funny. Like there's there's a, a video in Egypt, like Chef Mahmoud Jahad, some dude jumped on him, like straight up, like jumped like right here and just started like kissing him in, in his face and stuff. And he's like, oh you know what? I'm amazing. Like this is in the middle of a surah. <laughs> and then I send it to my chef, like, yo, why are these why is this guy like doing that? That's kind of weird. And he's like, yeah, but he, he attributed it to the, the effect of the Qur'an on him. So that voice was like a liaison to get into his heart, and then the ayah just bah, punched him. <laughs> so they can say it a lot, huh? Okay, so that's, that's one example of maqam sika sounds like. It's like a set of notes. <laughs> That's why you practice. See, because I told him to do it because it's the hardest one for me in the Quran. Yeah, anyways. Um, so we're going to do that. Okay, we can just show you guys a couple more. Um, who knows Imam Sudais? Yes. Yes, because he's quick. Y'all like him, huh? Is that a question? It's a question, yeah. Um, so he mostly, primarily, he recites with uh, Rust or like Kurd sometimes, or Bayati yeah. sometimes. A little bit. Rare. Sobat sometimes. Sobat sometimes, right? So he'll be like, um, this is Maqam Ras. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Malik Yawm Al-Din Iyaka Na'bud wa Iyaka Nasta'in Yeah. <clears throat> 
Our lungs are kind of triangular-ish, and we only fill up that top, like the tip, the tip of the ice, uh, what's it called, icebreaker? Iceberg. Iceberg, that's the icebreaker. <laughs> but you, fill, you have to fill up the whole thing, and that's something you learn with time, so. Uh, can you do some maqam sabah? <laughs> Come 
more professional to start with. Is that familiar though? Who, got, who knows Abdul Sheikh Abdul Basit Abdul Samad? That's how he starts. Like when he starts, like he'll put it up here and like, Oh, Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. Bismillahi Rahman Rahim. You get the point, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you want anything? Okay. Um, how are we doing on time? Okay. Are y'all bored? No. You want to take a fiver? No. no? Okay. Bismillah. So, what are the maqams? Can you go? Go. Go. Can you? Okay. What are the maqams? This is the most. This is maqam is used by uh, Sheikh Mishael Rashid Afasi, one of Sheikh Mishael Afasi. He uses this maqam. Other sheikhs like Nasser Qatami, other most of Khalid sheikhs use this maqam. And it sounds like this. I'll try. <coughs> someone on, on the stage and kind of put them on the spot. Amu Abu uh, Bilal, if you could come join us and give us like an imitation. <laughs> this morning he was blowing our minds away. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم نشكر أبنائنا الكرام على هذه الأمسية القرآنية فجزاهم الله خير الجزاء ونشكركم على هذا الحضور إخواني القرآن الكريم كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم 
تركت فيكم ما أن تمسكتم به ما لن تضلوا بعدي أبدا كتاب الله وسنة نسأل الله العظيم أن يجعل جمعنا هذا جمعا مرحوما ومغفورا أنا سأحاول أن أبدأ بآيات أو مقاطع والذي يعرف من صاحب هذا الصوت يقول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الرحمن علم القرآن خلق الإنسان علمه ألم تر كيف فعل ربك بعاد إرم ذات العماد الذين طغوا في بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الرحمن علم القرآن خلق الإنسان علمه البيان الشمس والقمر بحسبان والنجم والشجر يسجدان والسماء الرحمن علم القرآن خلق الإنسان علمه البيان حسين لا يستوي أصحاب النار وأصحاب الجنة أصحاب الجنة هم الفائزون لا
He's amazing, like just yeah, I mean, with all due respect to the Quran, like even if, when you put it aside, like they compare like the power of his voice to like one of the best like that's ever lived. You know, like the, the amount of range he has and the fact that he uses it for the most glorious book is is amazing and it's, it should be alhamdulillah, you know, mashallah. This guy's voice is, is unreal. And we're gonna Mahmoud Shahat. Any spelling works, you know, like <laughs> he's that big mashallah. So we're gonna try to kind of do a duo. Duo of them. Mm. I might lose my breath. Echo, echo. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. 
Okay, that's a wrap for our semester of UKC MSA events. I want to thank everyone that came to our events this whole semester. And inshallah, stay tuned for our next semester of, of many more amazing events. I want to thank uh, everyone for coming and thank our amazing uh, reciters here. I'm just, I'm glad that you guys all experienced what we all experienced because they're amazing reciters. And um, inshallah, you guys benefit from this event. And now um, we're going to pray Asha and get our good deeds. And, uh, and don't forget, we have a lot more food left. So if you guys are still hungry, we have more food. <laughs> All right, everyone upstairs, we're going to pray Asha. And, uh, and that's it. Jaqallah, Khair, and Assalamu Alaikum.